Hiya, Bob. How's it going? I am doing well. How are you doing today, John? Good. We have a, I'm especially excited. We have a new release of Octopus 2023.3 is out. And so I invited Bob here to talk to me about it and share his thoughts and feelings and give my perspective on it and kind of give us, uh, give everyone here a sort of tour of what's latest and greatest in the uh, latest version of Octopus. So um, in case you missed the announcement, we posted this up on LinkedIn and a variety of other social media channels. So 2023 is now available. Uh, it's packed with features. And some of the features that you see here, we're going to go through. Not all of them, of course. But um, there's also our What's New page, which you can check out at octopus.com slash what's new. And we highlight some of the top level features that we're going to go through. And Bob and I are going to just kind of go through some demos and show kind of how they work and kind of kick the tires, so to speak. Does that sound good to you, Bob? Yeah, I'm I'm excited by this. I'm I've been really really uh, buzzed for this entire this this release in particular, especially some of the new features and functionality we've added in there. So, I can't wait to talk about it some more. Okay, well, let's get started. Uh yeah. awesome. So, um we have support for improved container uh sorry, container deployments. Support for the Open Container Initiative Helm Registry. So, um OCI or the Open Container Initiative, which I can find here. Um, is basically a um, it's it's a basically an overse an overseeing of containers for a variety of aspects for that and then um, for what's new we have the ability to support uh, OCI based Helm registry so Helm is a technology that allows you to configure um, Kubernetes through packages so it's a way of actually um, it's sort of it, it's like it's like what it says it's a package manager for Kubernetes we have one actually for Octopus so if you want to use our Helm uh, chart for um, an Octopus instance, you can, uh, but this is now available to us inside of Octopus itself. So if you, as it says, to continue building on support for Helm and Octopus, we added the ability to reference Helm charts from OCI registries. You can now add OCI registries as an external feed to your library and select this chart to deploy in your upgrade to Helm chart step. Yeah, I have I think that's great. I mean, this definitely fleshes out more of that whole Helm chart story for us, especially when, I mean, deploying to Kubernetes, anything that you can do to make that a little bit easier, I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here we are inside of Octopus, uh, for those who know, know. Um, so here we have a sample deployment process. Uh, this is showing off some of our capabilities of deploying to Kubernetes. This is available from our samples, by the way, which is a public instance, uh, samples.octopus.app. You can check out Bob and I are going to use this as an example throughout the entire sort of video here. And if you haven't seen already, uh, we have a variety of steps available for Kubernetes. So you can do a bunch of things, including run customize, which we'll talk about, uh, deploying containers, run kube control, kube CTL, depending upon how you call it, um, deploy raw, raw YAML, YAML, uh, sorry, Kubernetes YAML, etc. There's lots and lots of stuff there. So OCI containers can be specified as a feed now going forward, and you can reference that as part of your deployments that leverage Kubernetes steps. So, you know, um, if you jump into one of these, for example, you can reference that feed directly for an OCI based container, which yep. is nice. Yeah, I'm cool. really excited about that. I think that's cool. Yeah. Uh, moving on quickly. So, fewer manual interventions with configurable step timeouts. So, step timeouts, Bob, what are these? What are, what are we talking about here? Yeah, yeah. So, this is actually a common feature that we get from our customers. Sometimes there's a deployment process or there's a step that just kind of goes off the rails and no one knows about it for quite some time. And it just sits there and sits there and sits there. <laughs> and it could be for like, I'm running a, uh, series of automated tests and somehow it loses connection or any number of those different things. And so people, they don't know that this is happening until they can't deploy anymore because all of their available tasks are being consumed. And so this allows us to time that out, basically stop that from even, uh, stop that deployment because it timed out, which is great. Yeah. It's something that yeah. I've wanted and I've hacked various different solutions <laughs> together. So I'm excited yep. this is built in. Yeah, yeah. So this is great, if especially when paired with uh, other solutions we have inside of our steps, which are uh, retries. And yep. uh, here's the new feature timeout. So this is really useful if you've got, say, a remote uh, service endpoint, whatever you're talking to, and maybe you have a flaky connection and no fault of your own, basically. Let's make that clear. This is yep. not an indictment of you <laughs> or Octopus, but sometimes things go, go wrong on the other end. And so timeouts allow you to specify, look, this is the hard limit in which in minutes in which we're going to deem this step has failed and you can set this appropriately. So it's a nice little, little 
uh, time out there. And so you'll see this in the task log when you execute. And so, I mean, there's not much to be said about this other than the fact that this gives you a nice sort of failure option. Did you have anything to add? Uh, anything else you want yeah, to add? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably just add, uh, probably set it something reasonable. Uh, I wouldn't set it to like one minute. I would probably set it to say something like 30 minutes to cover right. the vast majority of the use cases. And this is at the step level. It's not, at say, at the entire deployment level. Uh, so you can say, well, I know that this step is going to be a little bit more uh, flaky. And so I want to yeah. set this timeout. Yeah, yeah. We see this. I, I saw this with a customer who was attempting to upload a web app to Azure, yeah. and I yeah. think that Azure web app deployments via zip archives can take a while to decompress, especially if they're large, for example. So this will help. Um, they can do pair this with retries as well. Will help a great deal. So lots of uh, goodness there. Yeah. I so said the only thing I'd add on to the retries is I know it. It doesn't like retry like a second after it fails. It will wait a few, you know, I think it waits a set amount of time, I think 30 seconds or 15 seconds or something like that. So there's okay. a slight pause and then it will try again. Um, so nice. again, like you said, combined with both, yeah, I think it's a very powerful feature. Yep. All right, moving along, uh, source Kubernetes configuration files from Git for simpler deployments. This is awesome. Uh, so a lot of folks tend to publish their um, their text files to a source control, pretty smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. And Git being one of the more popular sort of locations for that. Um, so we added Git support to Octopus in general uh, a while back, and we're leveraging that more and more. And one of the common requests that people will say is like, look, I'm going to configure this cluster, uh, and I want to specify the YAML files, which is hosted over there in Git in source control. So allow me to point to that location and associate uh, my configuration that I'm going to use with that. So nice little change there as well. Um, it's just, you know, a subtle but but effective change for folks who want to utilize these values. So um, you can see it's exposed here. Uh, we have other options as well. You can publish it as part of a package, obviously. So you'd say, you know, push package the operation, or you can specify inline YAML as an example. Um, but now we have Git repository as an option. Yeah, I know it's funny if if you if you aren't using this and you want to use something like a package, uh, and you have GitHub, the, the the experience is just not that great because you have to publish a release within GitHub and then you can reference the package via the GitHub feed. And I'm just happy we can cut out a lot of those steps and just go. I just want to reference this file from yeah. my main or my master branch, and I don't have to create any sort of releases inside of GitHub or any of that other stuff. So again, this is something that I've I've wanted for some time, and I'm I'm excited <laughs> it was added to our our Kubernetes step first. Uh, my fingers are crossed that we'll be adding it to some other steps because I, I've been like working around this at that time. So I, I'm really excited <laughs> by this as well. <laughs> awesome, awesome. It seems like you're excited about everything, which is, which is what you want. Uh, I know, so. it's like, it's it's basically like the releases, the, the release of everything that I've wanted to see come through uh, is all happening in one quarter. Yeah, yeah, I'm wiping away a lot of tears. Uh, yeah. This is one that you and I talked about, but um, you're going to provide a demo of, and I'll just mention it here, then it will cut over to your screen. Yeah. Uh, more control over audit logs with adjustable retention. What is this all about? Yeah, so generally one of the biggest tables within Octopus Deploy in terms of the database is the audit table that we have inside of Octopus Deploy. And so what ends up happening is is that there are audit logs that are stored every action that you perform within octopus deploy be it a create a update or delete is logged into the audit log and so as you can imagine that can get very big very quickly and so we have some customers that have been using octopus deploy for 10 years their audit table is 100 gigs it's like we need a way to clean this up and we need to be able to do it in a safe and effective way without completely like going in and just deleting a bunch of records, which is just never a good thing. And so yeah. I'll show you what the experience looks like and what you can configure within uh, Octopus Deploy. So let's go over to my process, to my instance that I have configured. And so you can configure it how long you want to keep your audit log entries uh, by going to settings and then coming into event retention. So I have my event retention set pretty aggressively. This is mostly because this is my personal instance and I really don't care. So I mm -hmm. have it set to 30 days. Uh, for Octopus Cloud customers, the maximum you can set is 365 days. For self-hosted customers, it's 10 years. Uh, because again, we understand that some customers, they can't lose you know, seven years worth of data all of a sudden or anything right. along those lines. Yeah. So once you have it configured, 
if you come back to the audit screen and then you click on the overflow menu, you can view the managed archive logs. And they're stored as JSONL files that we can then download. Uh, so I can just click on this and I can download it automatically to my my app, uh, excuse me, to my uh, download folder, or I can mm -hmm. go ahead and I can download all of the, uh, excuse me, I can download all of these. Don't if I to. wanted to, I could also clean this all up. And yes. say, hey, <laughs> I almost said download all of them. Yep. But yeah. So if you want what you could, if you wanted to, what you could do then is you could then take some of those files and say, upload it to your SIEM tool. If that's something that you wanted to do as well, because I mm. know that I've talked to a couple of customers and they're interested in doing that because it is JSON. Hopefully there's a translator that can just take a, a raw JSON file and upload it appropriately. Right. Um, so I think combined with this, as well as our audit log streaming functionality, which is uh, available with our enterprise licenses, you can then say stream in real time to say Sumo Logic, but you can also get all of your legacy logs up there hopefully soon as well. Yeah, the uh, streaming of audit logs was added a couple of releases ago, if I remember correctly. Yep. And then yep. uh, audit log retention changes, et cetera. Uh, more control over this stuff because as you as you rightly point out, um, these these log file data data files can get pretty big after a while. Yeah, and this was something that we were noticing. They would slow down upgrades quite significantly. In fact, uh, if you had years and years and years worth of audit log data, because it has to change the you know it has to go through this database, and there's just so much data inside of that database that I think we were seeing for some customers, especially in Octopus Cloud, like they were taking over an hour to upgrade, and that's just because of the size of their database. And so with this, you know, we can we can reduce that size. You still get all of those audit logs. They're not going anywhere. They're just in another location. And depending on when you need it or don't need it, uh, you know, if you don't if, if you don't need it for uh, after like three years after your audit log entries, I think archive them off just makes a lot of sense. Another one that um, I know that you and I talked a lot about, and we mentioned a lot in uh, various YouTube videos that we have up on our channel. We've had webinars about this. Is easier management of tenants at scale with bulk actions. So the idea here yeah. is that oftentimes you have a lot of tenants and you have lots of projects and kind of marrying the two can be kind of like pair this with this, pair this with this. So there's lots of in and out sort of, you have to use your mouse and keyboard a lot. And uh, this will allow you to kind of make that a little bit simpler. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've gone ahead and I've added in just a few tenants today. Uh, nothing super big. I've added about six tenants, uh, various cities located out throughout Nebraska. So if you wanted to learn how to pronounce some of our fun names, you'll get to learn <laughs> how to pronounce that today in this, in right. this demonstration. <laughs> uh, but let's say I wanted to add Fremont to the Trident Stores application. I only wanted to deploy to production. I would come into Fremont, and this is how you would do it in the old ways. And so now I can come in here and I can click on, I want to add Trident Stores, go ahead and click on this, and then I can click on production. One of the changes that if, I don't know if you picked up on it is I can also add Trident if I chose to do that at the same time. And so this works both ways. I can add a tenant to multiple projects very quickly, or I'll be able to add multiple tenants to one project. And I'll show you what that experience is like in just a second. But what we can do now is go ahead and click on production and then connect one project. So that's, that's okay for if you have to do that once or twice a week, it's not terrible. But if you have a bunch of tenants you need to add yeah. very quickly, it can get old pretty fast. Yes, um, I'm sure you probably, I'm sure you might have run into this as well, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's come to the application itself, and we can go ahead and click on tenants, and then I'm going to go ahead and connect a bunch of tenants at once. So now I can just go ahead and add all of them. And then I can come come ahead and I can select the environment that I want to deploy to. I can also say I want everyone to go to staging or I can have everyone just go to production. I'm just going to go ahead mm -hmm. and go to production. And then it will go ahead and it will add each of those tenants. There we go. Add each of those tenants to the project. Now I do have to fill out the variables. That doesn't preclude me from having to fill out the variables, but I am notified about those those issues right away. So if I wanted to, I can go to Nibrera, and it looks like I think I have a common variable I need to fill out. And so I could just add NIO or something like that mm -hmm. and back up and running. So it's very, 
what I like about this is it's very fast, especially if you have some naming conventions that are already built into your variables. You can add tenants, many, 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 you know, dozens of tenants very, very quickly. Uh, another thing to make note of, uh, you might not have noticed this as well, I can go ahead and I can add a blank tenant from here, or I can clone an existing tenant. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and clone this. I could say, hey, I want to clone Niobrara, and I'm just going to give it a, another Nebraska name, Wayne. And this went ahead and it cloned it for me. It automatically added to the, the Trident stores, and bam, I'm done. Not mm -hmm. super hard to do. It's I can save a number of clicks by doing this, and I can manage my tenants much more effectively. So I'm super excited about this because I've had to go through and add a bunch of tenants for demos. I can't imagine what it's like to add hundreds or even thousands of tenants. So hopefully this makes things a little bit easier. Fantastic. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we've got a bunch of new features. Uh, we haven't even mentioned some of the other ones that we're working on, such as a step for customize, which allows you to do uh, better configuration management around templates, etc. So all this is listed again on our what's new page. And um, go ahead and check it out. Uh, the uh, bits are now live and uh, hope you enjoy what you see. And some of these obviously were soliciting early feedback. Uh, so let us know if you have any uh, feedback to share. And just to wrap things up, I'd like to mention that we have our roadmap, which is at roadmap.octopus.com. You can check it out there. We have uh, all, all of our features that we've released. Uh, we can go into each card and see the sort of motivation around each one of these features. Um, we also have some planned features coming up. Uh, I'm particularly excited about OIDC support, for example. Um, so there's yeah. lots of stuff there. And then we have our under consideration, which is like, you know, the, I see the mountaintop and I may not get there with you, but if everything happens, if all the stars align and everything, uh, this may be stuff that we add. Yeah. I'm really excited about the OIDC uh, feature that's coming out as well. We, I've been seeing some early demos of it and it's, <laughs> it solves a number of problems that I've had. So I, I'm, I'm really excited to see it as well. Awesome. All right. So, uh, yeah, again, just to reiterate, roadmap.octopus.com, make it a bookmark, make it a homepage. Why not? So uh, definitely getting updates there. You can also submit your own ideas as well. So I've talked about this repeatedly with folks. Uh, so let us know what you think. Anyways, uh, that's the latest bits. Those are That's 2023.3 in a nutshell. Bob, thanks a lot for uh, joining me to talk about some of these features. I really appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me.